Hey everyone and welcome back to a very special video. We are super excited to be uploading this one today because as you know, our YouTube channel is dedicated to providing you with as much 11 plus preparation content as possible, maths, English and reasoning. And we know you guys enjoy it. So we've decided to up our game. Via our brand new website, we are releasing four weekly lessons covering maths, English, verbal reasoning, non-verbal reasoning, spatial reasoning, and even providing you with homework tasks to go along with them as well. Now this is a brand new service. So we wanted to upload a lesson for completely free for you guys to have a look at yourselves. And today it's a maths lesson. We're going to take a look at converting units of measure. And yes, we will include the homework task for free in the description down below. So have a go at this lesson, have a go at the homework. And if you like what you see, why not check out our new 11 plus preparation service? You can check it out by clicking the link somewhere here, I hope. And also we'll put it in the description as well. That's enough of me talking about this. I'm going to now do a quick change to my pre-recorded lesson close and I'll see you in the video itself. Hope you enjoy it guys. But first, I need to know that you guys at home know your facts when it comes to conversion. Without knowing these facts, lots of questions in the 11 plus will be simply impossible to answer. So I want you to pause this video. If you're not sure about any of them, maybe you could do a bit of research. Maybe you could try and find out for yourself. If not, of course, we're going to go through them after. See how many you know. Hopefully those who are more confident spotted the challenge there. Let's go through some of these answers. So in one minute, there are 60 seconds. Now, some of these you'll know because it's things you're quite frankly unavoidable. You must know that 60 seconds or in a minute, you guys have been around for long enough to pick that up. But some of them aren't so obvious. So let's whiz through them. One hour is 60 minutes, so 60, 60. One day is 24 hours. One week is seven days. We do have a special name for 14 days. You might know that's two weeks, sure, but we also may well call that a fortnight. Now that is spelled differently to the popular game, but it's a fortnight is 14 days, it's two weeks. It does pop up in a question on your homework, I believe. One year equals how many days? Well, that's 365 days, but of course you may have heard of a leap year. That's when we get an extra day, so that's 366 days. Really interesting the reason behind that, actually, we're actually a quarter of a day off every single time something you might want to research if you're into science, but we're here for maths, so let's carry on. 10 years is one what? Well, we call that a decade. We talked about this before, that DEC means 10. So decade means 10 years. 100 years is a century, one century ago. You may have had cent as well in per cent, per hundred, or in cricket, if you score a century, you score 100 runs. So there's lots of links there. Finally, 1000 years, that is one millennium. I was old enough to be around. Uh, when we celebrated the year 2000, the new millennium, because we went over from 1,999 to 2000. So every thousand years we have a millennium, quite a long way to go for the next one. As for the challenge, if you had a go at this, it was just a case of really using these facts and then going one step further. So if one minute is 60, six minutes is six lots of 60, which is 360 seconds. Uh, how many days in eight weeks? Seven times eight. Do you see where your times tables come in constantly? You need to know them guys, it's gonna help you out a lot. 25 years is two and a half centuries and two weeks is how many hours? My goodness, what you had to do here was realize that it was 14 days and you multiply 14 by 24. I'm gonna show you a quick way to multiply these mentally if you feel more confident. We can just multiply, instead of multiplying by 14, we can multiply by 10 and multiply by four and then add them up. So two, uh, sorry, 24 times 10 is 240. 24 times four, double it is 48, double it again is 96. And then we can combine 240 and 96 and we get 336 hours. A quick way to multiply there if you're confident with those times table facts. However, we do need to move on. There's another list. This is another set of uh, facts basically you need to know when it comes to measurement. Time can come under measurement. These are the months of the year. Do you know how many days each month has? There's one special month, I'm sure you already know it. And just have a think, how will you remember this? Do you have a song, do you have a trick? Just take a go. So I remember being in reception or year one, you may have heard this song before where it goes, 30 days have September, so we're going to fill in as we go. 30 days have September, April, June, and, November. 
all the rest have 31, except, and I'm gonna fill them in from the bottom up, all the rest have 31, except, you're probably shouting at the screen at me right now, uh, what month does not have 31 or 30 days? There's a bit of a hint with the size of the box because there are, sorry, 31 days for March and 31 days for January. There are two answers for February. February is a special month. It has 28 days normally. In a leap year, when we add the extra day on, it goes into February. So February has 28 or 29, depending on if it's a leap year or not. Some key facts we need to know. How about this one then? Last one. This is basically the core of the conversions you have to know to approach the 11 plus confidently. See how many of them you know now, and if you don't know any, well then you know what to practice, right? Let's see how we got on then. One centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. If you think about a ruler that you have at school, you may well be able to visualize 10 millimeters fitting into one centimeter. One meter is 100 centimeters. Notice that little hint with cent we talked about before, 100. So meter to centimeter, 100 meter, uh, centimeters. One to 1,000 millimeters. Again, we talked about millennium, milli means thousand. So millimeter, there's a thousand of them in just a meter. So one meter is a thousand millimeters. Again, I've seen this crop up quite a lot in the, in the, in the 11 plus papers. 1,000 meters is one kilometer. So half a kilometer is half of a thousand, which is 500 meters. One kilogram is a thousand grams. Therefore, 0.5 kilograms is 500 grams. One liter is a thousand liters, mostly thousands we're working with here with these ones, uh, milliliters, sorry. And then 500 milliliters, it must be half. So 0.5 liters. Take a look at that. How many did you get? If you didn't get them, I'd like you just to write them down. Okay, you need to learn them. So if you missed out any key facts there, or there are one or two that you know you forget, write it down on paper, practice it, recite it, see if you can learn them off by heart. This challenge, I'm actually gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna show you how to solve it because we're gonna come on to these questions. Five mil millimeters plus four centimeters. I'll just give you one answer. It's 45 millimeters, which seems bizarre, right? Five plus four is nine. Or you could have written down 4.5 centimeters. If you're thinking, what on earth are you talking about? Well, you're in luck because we're about to practice these questions exactly. So before we get there, I want to just make sure we're super confident with meters, centimeters, millimeters. So on this page, you're going to pause the video and you're going to use the fact centimeters and millimeters. And what I want you to focus on in the top corner is this side. So if you're moving from centimeters to millimeters across this arrow, you times by 10. If you're moving from millimeters to centimeters, you divide by 10. Have a go at these questions. I'll give you some answers at the end. Okay, let's, uh, let's dive in there. Let's take a look to see how we got on. So for this one, I'm gonna go through more slowly and then we'll get quicker as we go through. One centimeter to millimeters. So go to the top here. I know centimeters to millimeters, the number has to get bigger by 10. So we take one and we're going to multiply it by 10. One centimeter, therefore, is 10 millimeters. Once we've got that fact, you might start to be able to pick up some patterns and go more quickly. But if one centimeter is 10 millimeters, two centimeters must be 20. Then working backwards, 40, we divide by 10, it's going to be four centimeters. Five, we times by 10 again, we're going up, it's 50. Five and a half, that's going to be 50. That five has to go somewhere and it's right next to the other five, so it's 55 millimeters. And 67 millimeters, we're going from millimeters to centimeters, this is where we need to divide by 10. So 66 divided by 10, guys, this is a really, really key bit, a key skill rather you need to have when using measurement and when you're looking to get ready for the 11 plus. Okay, you need to be able to divide by 10, 100 and 1000, even when it means going into decimals. So the best way to do this always is to think of a place value chart. It doesn't really matter, you don't have to label them. I'm just gonna put a decimal place somewhere in the middle and I'll just do a few because sometimes I know I've got a few questions in a row. 66 would fit here because this is always the ones next to the decimal place. If we're dividing by 10, we're going to go down, make it smaller, one place. So 66 divided by 10, we shift the digits down and we get 6.6. .6. So, uh, so the answer down here, I've done 66, it doesn't really matter. Ours is 67, so instead of 6.6, .6, I know anyway it'll be 6.7 .7 as the answer. Just use a different one for the example, obviously. The question answer is 6.7. 
I want you to try it now with meters and centimeters. And again, look at the top. And these are things that by the end of the year, really, when you're preparing for this 11 plus, you need to be able to do this like second nature, okay? Because you know these facts so well. So if we're going from meters to centimeters, we multiply by 100. If we're going from centimeters back to meters, we must divide by 100. Have a go at these questions. See what you can do. See how many answers you've got then. So one meter, we multiply it up here by 100. Well, we might know this fact as well. And hopefully, if you don't know the fact already, you will by the end of the lesson. One meter equals 100 centimeters. So five meters must be 500. Working backwards here is easy because we're in 100. So it's just seven meters. 6.1 into centimeters. Well, if it was just six, it'd be easy, right? It'd be 600. But it's 6.1. So you know that one digit has to be right next to the six. So if we think about it like that, we can start working more quickly on our head. It's 610, not 601, 610. And we can prove it again by getting our place value chart, putting our decimal place in, writing 6.1, and we're multiplying by 100. So we're multiplying by 100, we need to do two places because it's two lots of multiplying by 10. We're going to shift them up two places to here. The one goes here, and then of course, the placeholder for 610. Now how about 6.01? Notice this time that 6.01, that zero must still hold its place. So the answer is going to be 601. Very subtle difference between these two, but a completely different answer at the end because we have to make sure we hold our place. All of those digits move together up and down your place value chart. And at the bottom, that's half of a meter. Half is 0.5, another key fact that we will pick up over the year, something that will help you move quicker through certain questions. But I do want to jump now into something that's in the second part of your homework. So everything we've done so far is the first part of the homework, just the key facts. The second part of your homework are these questions here. And it's kind of an introduction as to how units can make something way more tricky. I'm going to ask you to pause the video before I explain anything. See if you notice the trick at least and try and get an answer. Okay, you might be thinking one plus one is two. I know, I'd learned that in reception. I know one plus one is two. Well, okay, but did you notice the trick? It's all in the units. One centimeter plus one millimeter is nonsense, okay? If I had one apple and one chair together, I have two things, it just doesn't work. We need to make sure that the units are the same. And look at the answer, it's blank millimeters. So that means I've got a hint as to what to do. I'm going to keep the millimeters in the uh, question the same, but I'm going to change centimeters now to millimeters. Once the units are the same, and therefore they match my answer, I can answer the question really easily. So one centimeter to millimeters, look at the top, you've forgotten. Centimeters to millimeters, we multiply by 10. So I'm going to multiply this by 10, it's 10 millimeters. Now I can answer the question. Once I have converted, and this is a key fact for all questions, whether they are just practice ones like this or word problems that we are going to get onto in a second, we must make the units the same. 10 plus one is 11. The answer is 11 millimeters. The maths is really easy. We just have to be able to spot exactly what to do. So with that in mind, can you try this one? Not very different, but there's a key change that I've made. Can you spot it? Can you get an answer? Did you see it? Did you get it? It's the same start of the question, but look how much of a difference the answer can make if it's given a different unit. So centimeters this time, which means I'm keeping one centimeter and I'm going to add something centimeters here. Well, let's go, we're going from millimeters to centimeters. So what's that? We need to make sure we memorize this. For now, I'm going to look in the top corner. Millimeters to centimeters is divide by 10. So one divided by 10 that means I'm going to shift my digits down. I always just do a table. I can do this in my head now, but if you write your place value chart out as much as you can, it's gonna help you be able to do it in your head eventually. So divide by 10, which means we shift it down one place to the right, the one goes here, and we have 0 0.1. So one divided by 10 is 0 0.1 centimeters. One plus 0 0.1 is 1.1 centimeters. Now at this point, you might be thinking, okay, I know what to change, I know how to change it, I've got all that support, but I'm struggling with multiplying and dividing by 10 and 100 and 1000. That's where you have to step in and practice that as much as you can. Multiplying and dividing by 10, 100 and 1000 is a key skill to using conversion question, answering conversion questions in your 11 plus preparation. 
why don't you try this one then? Do the same as what we've done before. Check what units we need to use. Do any converting you have to do, then the math should be easy. Let's take a look, shall we? So the answer is in centimeters. So I'm going to keep 20 centimeters the same. I'm going to add four meters. Well, I'm going to change that to centimeters so the math is easy. Centimeters to meters, oh, sorry, it's the other way around. Meters to centimeters, we multiply by 100. So one meter is 100 centimeters. So four meters is 400 centimeters. 400 plus 20, the math is simple. The answer is 420 centimeters. Without knowing to change the units, lots of children may well just put four plus 20 is 24. They'll get it wrong. So it's a key bit of information that we have to know when we're answering these questions. So I've got three here in a row for you to try out. If you're stuck on which uh, division or multiplication to do, 10 or 100, check the top right corner. See where you're moving from. And two, make the units the same. See if you can get three answers. Okay, here we go. So the top one's in millimeters. So I'm going to change this from three centimeters to 30 millimeters, multiply by 10. 700 plus 30 is 730 millimeters. Here I've got one meter takeaway centimeters. I need to keep it as meters. So I know this fact now. One meter is 100 centimeters. 100 takeaway 54 is 46 centimeters. And then finally at the bottom, four meters. This is very similar. Did you notice? How quickly did you answer it? This known fact of four meters being 400 centimeters plus 20 is going to be 420 centimeters. Once we build up that ability to spot those patterns quickly, one cent uh, sorry, one meter is 100 centimeters, four meters is really easy to change and we should get quicker and quicker and quicker as practice goes on and on and on. And you'll have plenty of practice on your homework sheet this week. So this is now the final progression almost in this 11 plus thought process of preparing for the 11 plus journey. We've looked at the actual facts we need to know, the conversion facts. We've then applied the knowledge of conversion to answer a question when it's just given as numbers. And the final stepping stone here is actually then looking at some word problems. So wherever you are in this journey, you're gonna spend more time on it this week. It might still be in learning those facts. It might be in just practicing the conversion, but we're going to try and push as well onto, can you answer some worded problems? So I'm gonna ask you to pause the video and just see if you can answer this question using what we've talked about. Then of course, I'll go through with you after. Okay, let's take a look. A plant stands at 1.3 meters in height. You know, I just always like to, I'm gonna draw a beautiful flower. I always like to draw things in maths because it just helps me to visualize the question. So here's my plant, very standard flower. It's 1.3 meters in height. So I'm just going to label that 1.3 meters. Okay, it grows three centimeters each day thereafter. So it's getting taller and taller and taller. Did you notice the units are different? The units are different. We're going to come back to that. How tall is the plant one week after purchase? Now, as I'm doing the maths, I don't want to have meters and centimeters messing my brain up, making me confused. So because three centimeters, I'd rather work in centimeters. So I'm going to convert 1.3 meters into centimeters. Now I know I have to multiply that by 100. So one meter is 100 centimeters. So 1.3 meters is 100 and 30 centimeters. Now I can actually do some math. How tall is the plant one week after purchase? Well, one week is seven days and the plant grows three centimeters each day. So seven multiplied by three is 21 centimeters it's grown. So I'm going to take the length of the plant at the start, which is 130. I'm going to add to, uh, add to that 21. So the plant is now 151 centimeters. And you might be thinking, yes, I've answered this 11 plus question, get in. And then you look at the answers options because remember it's a multiple choice test. Oh, it's not there. Well, what have I told you it was? The, 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 these questions, they're built to try and trick you, okay? 151 centimeters is the same as 1.51 meters. So in this rather simple question where really we had to do 130 plus 21 is 151, the addition of conversion 
has added two or three steps to this entire process. So the answer is D. Luckily, it's the only one with the digits 151 one together, so we could have used deduction to get rid of them. But this is just an example of this sneaky 11 plus paper. These maths questions are just sprinkled with extra steps and things to try and trip you up, unfortunately. Can you have a go at this one then? So we're starting to get an idea of what we need to do. We know that the units might change mid question, but we're practicing converting when we need to. See what answer you get. Okay, let's take a look. A class of 32 children place their 30 centimeter rulers end to end. Now I said I like drawing, but I'm not sitting here drawing 32 rulers. I'm going to have to imagine this one. So 32 lots of 30. Well, let's think of it this way. 32 times three is 96, and then it's 10 times bigger. Because it, times in by 30 is the same as doing times by 10 times by three. So we can just do them separate, separate steps. So we have 960 centimeters. That's a long line of rulers. Uh, and it says, how long was the length in total to the nearest meter? So I've got my answer in centimeters. I need to put it as meters to answer this question really. So going from centimeters to meters, again, Rewind the video if you need to see that piece of advice at the start where we showed you what to do when you go from meters or centimeters or millimeters. But I'm going to tell you now to go from centimeters to meters, we divide by 100. So shifting those digits down the place value chart, 960 centimeters is going to be 9 whole meters, point 0.6. 9 whole meters in the hundreds, point, and then 6 right next to it. That zero can disappear. It's at the end of the decimal. We don't need to write it down. So we have 9.6 meters is the length of this ruler. Look what this question has done. Not only have you had to do all of this work with converting and using measurements, it's now asking you to round. We have to go to the nearest whole meter. So what's 9.6 to the nearest whole meter? Is it closer to nine or is it closer to 10? Well, halfway is 9.5. So 9.6 is here, which means it's closer to 10 meters. The answer to this question is E. So you're getting the gist, you get more practice. It's quite tricky. This is something we're going to do a few times across the year. We're going to keep revisiting it, keep reminding you of the facts you need to know. But have a read of this one and see what you can do. Let's dive straight in. A pencil measures 15.4 uh, centimeters in length. After being sharpened, it now measures 14.7 centimeters in length. How much length did it use? Rather straightforward, right? 15.4 subtract 14.7 will give us the difference. A little bit of exchanging here to do. 14 take seven is seven. Four take four, remember to put the decimal place down, is zero. One take one is zero. So it's just 0 0.7, 0 0.7 centimeters. Yes, I've answered the question. Let's see where it is in the answers. It's not there. Like I said, guys, classic classic 11 plus, 11 plus questioning here. You've done all the hard work, but you still got one more step to do, and that is conversion. So 0.7 centimeters, all of these answers are in millimeters. So I know it can't be 0.7 millimeters because the numbers are the same, can't be 0.7 for both of them. If I'm going from centimeters to millimeters, I have to multiply by 10. This is where knowing those facts come in handy, okay? You're not going to get a sheet when it comes to test time with all of the key facts written down. You have to know to multiply by 10. 0.7 multiplied by 10 is seven centimeters. The answer here is seven millimeters, sorry, because we're converting, geez. Centimeters even on there. The answer is seven millimeters, which is B. Knowing those facts are the only way to unlock answering these questions. So if you still don't know them, spend a bit of time trying to memorize them. Okay, let's see what you can do then. We've had a lot of practice with word problems. You've got a lot of practice on your homework. Let's try one more, see what you can get. I suppose the point we're trying to make, guys, with you doing all these questions is to just see how they can be so sneaky, sprinkling in new bits of information that you just have to know. There's no shortcut. So let's take a look at this one, which is a really good example. A plant grows 2.3 millimeters a day. Now there are no multiple choice here because I just want you to focus on the actual question itself. How much does it grow in centimeters? So we have to know how to go from millimeters to centimeters. That's the first thing. In the month of June, 
we we have to know how many days are in June. That little fact we talked about at the start of this session is integral to actually answering this. And if you don't know how many days there are in June, it becomes a guess. Okay, so 30 days have September, April, June. So we know June, if we know our song, has 30 days. So let's think of it this way. We've got 2.3 multiplied by 30 days. Remember that little trick I told you earlier, you could split a number when you're multiplying it into its factors. So I'm going to do 2.3 times 10 and then times it by 3 because 30 is the same as 10 times 3. So 2.3 times 10 is 23 and I've still got multiplied by 3 left. 23 multiplied by 3 is 69 and that is in millimetres. So the answer is 69, right? No, it's not, because look, we had to put it into centimetres. So 69 millimetres, millimetres to centimetres, I know I've got to divide it by 10. So I'm going to do 69 divided by 10 is 6.9 centimetres. And that is the actual answer to this question. Hopefully, if anything, if you're finding these tr questions tricky, at least you know now what the people writing these 11 plus papers are doing to try and trick you. And you have a clear path as to what you need to do at home to practice even more. So do take a look at the homework, we'll come on to that in a second, but you're on a journey here, guys. You need to know the conversion facts, which was the first part of this lesson. You have to be able to apply those to answer questions where the units are different. And then the final step is putting it into those word problems, those tricky questions, two, three, four steps. It's a long journey, it's a process. But just think, where are you on that journey? Where do you need to practice? And you're gonna move through it as you get ready and closer and closer to the real thing.